Uh, she's also an incredibly talented hitter as well. So you see uh, her in the lineup again today, and we'll talk about that more later. Grand Canyon starts the game off with a single. So a team that's been struggling, they lost their last four to come out, and well, actually the last two by one run. So to come out here against a team like UCLA, that's a great way to get things started. Uh, that's that's exactly what Grand Canyon University, if they could have rode how that started, right down the right down first baseline, get your first runner on, uh, good start for the Lopes. So that was Shay Smith, who's batting 333 on the season. She's followed by uh, Lorian Olson, uh, Nikki Gonzalez, then Sierra Smith, Lainey Gomez, Kaylee Dietrich, that will follow. Tom uh, starts her off with a ball. 1-0 is the count. So Grand Canyon University out of Phoenix, Arizona. It's actually a very up-and-coming school there. A lot of people think of Arizona or Phoenix area, they think of Arizona State, but a lot of kids just decide they go to Grand Canyon University. It's a lot, there's good value in your education as far as price, size-wise. It's a very up-and-coming school there in the Phoenix uh, metro area. So Tal Talapua is at third base for the Bruins. We'll get you set with a defensive lineup in a minute. On the mound today, Tala Milo. We had to uh, practice that one a few times. Tala, Tala Milo, some, some really uh, great players on this UCLA team and also some very difficult names as we, as we realized. Uh, but some very, uh, you're gonna see some, some real sluggers. Some players that they, they when you got it when you go to UCLA, you know, whether it's on a, whether it's uh, whether you're just even on the roster as a junior or coming out of high school, you got to really have the talent. It is a destination spot for girls softball. So in the lineup for the Bruins, uh, Brianna Perez, Kylie Perez, the sisters, of course, they're up the middle, shortstop and second base today, and that will be ball four. And so Grand Canyon has the first two runners on. UCLA, of course, has only trailed once this season. So this is quite a development for Grand Canyon, getting the first two runners on. And that'll bring up their number three hitter, Nikki Gonzalez. So a little cold in the air, a little lot crisper than you would normally uh, find here in Coachella Valley, here at Cathedral City. So maybe they're coming out cold. Maybe UCLA uh, just not, uh, not the best start they would hope for, uh, giving up two lead on base uh, runners, but we'll see what happens here, see if uh, they can dial it up and take care of the Lopes. So Nikki Gonzalez comes into the game, struggling a little bit, only batting 241. The right-hander looks at a strike. Last year, eight stolen bases for Olsen. They maybe uh, wish they could put her at first right now if they could. Um, so, Ta Milo gets another strike. So one and two is the count. We're just getting started here, top of the first inning here at the Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic. We're glad you joined us on Flow Softball's broadcast of the 2018 Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic. We got the next two games are UCLA games. Very excited to see both of them. Foul ball heading towards Fenway Park. So again, we'll do it again one and two. Still nobody out. One and two is the count to Nikki Gonzalez from Tucson, Arizona, so making about the hour and a half trip from Tucson to the Phoenix area for her college career. Fouls it off again towards the UCLA bench. Uh, appeared and in 52 we'll games again. as a junior last year for the Lopes. Uh, first on the team, 15 doubles. And she also can go along with it. Uh, uh, tying, excuse me, she had five home runs a year ago, actually five home runs as a sophomore, four as a junior. And she transferred here after her soft, after her freshman year, so sat out her sophomore year, uh, junior year. Just a little bit outside to even up the count, two and two. Defensively for the Bruins, first base we got Kinsley Washington. Second base, of course, one of the Perez sisters. Shortstop, Perez once again, third base, Tao Telefua. 
Left field. Left field, Aaliyah Jordan. Foul ball again. Center field, you've got Bubba Nichols, who had a home run yesterday. And right field, we have Zoe Shaw. So Nikki Gonzalez still trying to get going a little bit here. 2018, it's still young in the season, but a 241 percentage. Actually, uh, that has her right now, what is it, seventh on the Lopes lineup. Batting here in that th fourth spot, third spot. A little fly ball actually dropped by Washington in foul territory. She was already looking to tag first base. and get have, to, have to tell yourself, I'm going to sit when they're, when they're the coolest ones. Little pop-up to the pitcher. Easy play for the Bruins, and we got one down. So after those two runners to start things off, Talamilo, and that was a good, a good uh, pitch right there. Full count, able to able to get that first out. The first out's always the hardest to get. So once now, I think she's going to dial stuff up. One of the best pitchers right here that uh, UCLA has to offer in the circle. And her wind up in the pitch, a little bit outside for a ball, one and zero. So Grand Canyon got the first two runners on. Got runners on first and second. One down in the inning. Remember, the Bruins have only trailed once this season. It was to UC Santa Barbara earlier in the Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic. Tara Mila, it's outside once again. So 2-0 to Sierra Smith. What a year she had last year. Uh, unbelievable, 14-0, 2.83. Earn run average uh, was in that in the Women's College World Series against uh, number nine, Texas A&M. She had a big strikeout in relief. It's Talamillo, now a senior. Somebody Inside again. So three and oh is a count. Sorry to cut you off. No, Cody. no, they got, I, I like, what I like about UCLA is their pitchers are seniors. When I, you don't, seniors are such a asset to any program. Girls that have done there, been to Women's College World Series. They've got so many different players. They also have a couple of young pitchers, Rachel Garcia and Acevedo. What a good problem to have, though. And that's a little bit low for a ball, so Todd Milo has a little bit of a jam right here, one out in the inning. Bases are loaded for Grand Canyon University. And what a win this would be for Grand Canyon University to knock off a UCLA team that is in the top five currently. It would definitely shock the college uh, softball world for sure when that score pops up. Uh, a team, Grand Canyon, picked to win the conference, but it's been a bit of a struggle. I think that's that's safe to say so far. The, obviously the losing streak, but it's the way they lost. Uh, one run losses to Syracuse in their last game, so it's tough. It's, those are the toughest ones to swallow. They had a one nothing loss to UC Riverside, who we just saw, which they were only picked fifth to win the uh, to win the well fifth in the Big West. So you're you're teams that maybe you should be beating, UC Riverside type teams, uh, like Syracuse. They, that, these are teams that you see you would expect to be, at least coming in the year. Uh, struggling Stanford, they lost 0-5, so this would be a momentum changing win for this program this season. Laney Gomez takes outside for a ball, 1-0. Gomez comes into the game batting 286. She's a left-handed hitter, kind of crowding the plate. Almost got both toes on the chalk. So Tom Milo is struggling a little bit here in the first inning. That's a strike, one and one. You could just tell that zip, even compared to, we saw Dulcini for UC Riverside last game. She was fantastic, but it's nothing like, that fastball is nothing like we see from Tyler Milo. She can just whip it in there, and you could just, that extra pop that you don't find from uh, many pitchers, really, not, at least uh, at least not, not like that. Round ball to, uh, Perez, she uh, tags one but can't get the other. So can't quite turn the double play and Grand Canyon steps out to a one nothing lead. Only the second time UCLA has trigger. Unbelievable player. No nerves, coming in as a freshman on a very rich and experienced team and you come in here and you do what she has done. Uh, totally have earned, totally earned the respect I'm sure of her teammates, earned the respect of the UCLA Bruins program that she deserves this uh, playing time as a freshman on Alhambra High School. She'll be followed by her sister, Kylie Perez, Aaliyah Jordan afterwards. I'm sure that happens a lot in softball, right? Where a sister goes one school, the other sister goes that. It's just kind of a tradition. You see, I've seen a lot of sisters across a lot of these rosters here at the Marionette Classic. 
hit hard past the shortstop into left field. That'll be a base hit for Brianna Perez. She was facing Brianna Aguilar for Grand Canyon University. 424 ERA, 1.59 uh, whip. Brianna Perez, of course, that'll up her average from 467. Her sister coming up, the second baseman, Kylie Perez. Quite a duo up the middle. Coming in, going three or one for three against UAB. Didn't play so much about Syrac or play much against Syracuse earlier. S slap hit to the second baseman. Perez is too quick. Beats it out. Well placed slap hit by Perez, and the Bruins are in business. They got their first two runners on, and nobody out here in the first inning. So here we go, answering the GCU call right away in their top of the first with runners on for the first three of them. Here's GCU with two on, or excuse me, here's UCLA with two on, first and second. And of course, their power coming up to bat. Leah Jordan has been red hot here in the Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic. She's up her average to 571. Big opportunity here. Aguilar with the ball in the dirt. It scoots by the catcher. Taylor Pack, or excuse me, the uh, catcher, Nikki Gonzalez, and the advan uh, runners advance. It's now second and third with nobody out. Median of the mines in the circle. Grand Canyon, of course, jumped out to the early lead. Monster so games. Aguilar the pitch. That's a strike to even the count at one and one. So if you're Leah Jordan here, you don't want to try to do too much. Because at any point, she can just unload on this ball, but with just no, well, no outs here, it's vital. Just get that tied up run. Get the one to one and just totally kind of reminder to GCU, hey, at this point of our season, we're just on two different wavelengths of how it's going so far, especially here at the Mary Nutter Classic. So two runners on, runners on, second and third for Jordan. Big opportunity for a couple RBIs. Off speed pitch almost hits the on deck hitter. Tao Talafua had to dive out of the way. That would have been a bruise. Good reflexes Especially by the third baseman. Talafua, you don't want to hit her. You don't want to hit one of your best hitters right before she's about to come up with uh, potential base runners on. Even Just count two and two. Nobody out here in the first. Off speed pitch, it's hit hard to the gap. That's gonna drop off the wall. Two runs will score. Leah Jordan into second, standing up, and the Bruins take a 2-1 lead. Well, just like that, from that early momentum from the Lopes, here we sit, UCLA, Aaliyah Jordan, uh, just continuing what she's doing. That was <laughs> crushed. That was by far the hardest hit ball I've seen so far today. Um, the wind was really bad earlier. We saw the, it was the sign. Uh, struggled a little bit yesterday. Still has a 3.20 average, so much power. Hard hit ball to the shortstop. Aaliyah Jordan will have to hold, throw across the diamond, and they get the Bruin third baseman. We got one down. Well, the first one was real hard to get here for the Lopes, but they got it against one of the best hitters in the country, the junior out of Carson, Tao Ta Ta Lua. Hey, Bob, right here, Kate. Here we go. Hit well, but right at the shortstop. So Rachel Garcia who has had an absolutely monster week. Takes inside for a ball, 1-0. She's almost thrown two perfect games this week, Thursday and last night. So quite the talent also offensively. She's batting 320. Um, I believe we looked it up yesterday. And she actually threw 10 no-hitters in high school. Aguilar into the wind. That's a strike. One and one is the count. Still only one out here in the first inning. Bruins taking a 2-1 lead. Doesn't surprise me though, those are the type of kids that UCLA get, those top top caliber players that could go anywhere in the country and they choose UCLA and that's the, definitely the case for, for this uh, high school standout, that is to say the least, 10 no hitters. That is, that is Hard hit ball to the shortstop across the diamond. They get the out, Aaliyah Jordan has to hold. Good play by Shea Smith on a high ground ball. Gets the out, and the Bruins still have a runner on third, but now there's two outs. And that'll bring up Bubba Nichols, the sophomore. 
from Merced, California. She was, she's, uh, well, of course, busy on the UCLA roster, but also part of the U.S. Women's Junior National Team. Uh, won gold at the World Championship in 2017, so uh, she's not just college talent level, but Olympic level. Aguilar struts her off with a strike, 0 and 1 to Bubba Nichols. And Bubba Nichols, we haven't seen her on the mound, but she actually is listed as a pitcher. I do believe I watched her game last year, uh, called a game that she was pitching for UCLA in this Mary Nutter Classic. Hard hit up the middle, that's gonna drop, so she'll get an RBI on that one. Gets past the center fielder, but Nichols is gonna stay at first, and the Bruins have a 3-1 lead here in the first. They are having their way at the plate right now, whether it's outside or... Because you have to earn that time. There's a lot of girls that put in a lot of time that don't get the opportunity when they get older because of players like Nichols. Taylor Pack stepping in for the Bruins, takes outside for a ball. Nikki Gonzalez threatening to throw down to first base behind the runner, but she holds on to the ball. Taylor Pack last night absolutely crushed a home run to left field. First home run of the season. Is that our first uh, Mary Nutter home run of the tournament? Uh, yes, it is for her, but definitely okay. not for the Bruins. Bruins, they can do it in all aspects. They can hit for power, they can hit for average. They run the base as well. Defensively, they're good. And in the circle, they have so much talent. Softly hit to the shortstop. Shea Smith goes back and makes the catch to end the rally. But the Bruins are able to put three across. They now lead three to one. She had a little bit of a rough first inning, walked a couple batters, looking to rebound here. But on the opposite spectrum for Tafalio to get out of there with just one run after that struggle. She definitely, there was no doubting, she struggled coming out. But to be able to get out of there just giving up one, it's a, it's, it's a momentum shift back towards the Bruins that helped them in the bottom of the half of the inning. Keaton hits a ground ball to Perez. Perez across the diamond and we got one down. And that actually was a really good play by Washington. Perez wasn't very accurate a couple times. So yeah, it was a nice play there to Get the, get the sure out, which it was. It's a good pitch. So, Madeline Dowdell takes a strike. 111 hitter, right-hander. Playing on the infield, or playing left field, excuse me, for Grand Canyon University. The Lopes, of course, jumped out to a one nothing lead. The Lopes, purple uniforms. Off-speed pitch. Hits the umpire in the shoulder. You know, we... Uh, Talk about the catchers, the catchers are so tough. Blocking all these balls in the uh, dirt, having all that padding. Umpires, you know, they do have some padding on, but we always talk about how a ball finds a way to hit in between the padding or right around it. And we certainly hope the umpire's okay, kind of holding his right arm uh, down a little bit. They're tough guys. They're based a lot of times. They're misleading because there haven't been many games. Ground ball, chopper to the first baseman. She's gonna have to hurry, throw in the dirt. Washington's not able to dig it out. Good backup by the right fielder, Zoe Shaw, but Grand Canyon gets on base. That is a runner, or a runner on base that they could really use. And a good hitter coming up, Taylor Kay with a 304 average thus far this season. Grand Canyon's had a runner on each inning thus far. So a ball to start her off. I like, like their patience so far. They, they've been not trying to do too much against Talamilo. They know who they're going up against and taking what she's given them. And she hasn't been as accurate as we've seen in the past. Okay, the lefty, slightly open stance. Tries to slap at it. Another ball, two and oh. So this will be interesting. Uh, the coaches, let's see what they come up with. Let's see the strategy here. Just a sophomore last year, this is Taylor Kay. She just went, or just batted 217. So it's, uh, you have a hitter who maybe doesn't have the same type of numbers, same type of confidence going against the Talamilo, but here she sits on two, you know, closer pitches, but sat there and let make, has make a Talamilo make her pitches. And so far she hasn't been able to answer early on in counts. Kylie Perez calling for a meeting just outside the circle to go over strategy. Kylie Perez, the older sister of Brianna Perez. 
Kylie Perez is looking to rewrite a couple records in the UCLA record book. She has a very high batting average in her career at UCLA. Inside with a ball. That's been a very good Mary Nutter for Kay. Against Stanford, she went one for three, then went one for two against Riverside. Uh, she was 0 for two against Arkansas, but um, she's hit the ball well lately, at least here at the Mary Nutter. 304 so far in the year. There's a strike. So three and one is the count. Tamilo's a fighter though, you know, even when she gets down. Tamilo struggling a little bit with control, trying to work her way back in this at bat. She winds and delivers. Called strike, a little bit high. So Kay was halfway down to first base when the umpire made the call. You know, we talk about often the umpires see that as kind of showing them up to just assume that it was a ball. And then there's, if there's a close pitch coming up in the future, you might not uh, you might not get the way. You, you gotta have to be careful. That's good. That one was up high, so that one's a ball. So we got runners on first and second now with one out in the inning. Grand Canyon trying to rally to tie this game. They trail by two. We got two runners on in the second inning. It's early, top of the second inning. Wind is blowing a little bit in Cathedral City. You see it swirling. Looks like it's going right to left, but then you see it just come right back, left to right. I think very few people would have guessed, though, that the Lopes would have had, what, five runners already on in two innings, five or six? They have predicted to win the WAC. They're a good up and coming program, a rather new university. There's a lot of sand now suddenly blowing. In fact, I just got some in my eye and I'm well back in the crowd. Yeah, they had to stop the play a couple times earlier. Uh, it stopped and then it would start again, um, but there was a time for probably like 10 minutes where I think maybe the, the umpire like four separate times had to, had to say, all right, let's just wait a second. Let's let that gust go away. So uh, it's not too bad right now. It's actually uh, pretty good conditions. Shea Smith stepping up, uh, threatening to bunt, and she takes a strike. One and one is the count. She's a batting 667 with runners in scoring position, and she has a runner in scoring position. GCU going with the Arizona girls. That's what they, they're across the roster, they stay in state. High strike, one and two. You see a lot of the rosters, even for schools that are out of state, filled with California players, but Arizona famous for solid softball players. Of course, Jenny Smith or excuse me, Jenny Finch is one of the top players, arguably the best of all time. Hard hit ball into the gap, that's gonna fall. Runners only go station to station. Good throw by Bubba Nichols to the plate, but Grand Canyon's in business. Bases loaded for the Lopes, and we still only have one out. So here we go, the second team all whacked from a year ago. She uh, doing so well today. Okay, that's fine. She'll bounce back. Let's let's bring a Grower. Let's let's just change it up a little bit. It's it's such a an advantage to have this many capable arms. So Grower starts it off a little bit high for a ball. Olson led the team last year with eight stolen bases, so it's going to be hard for the Bruins to turn two. They might look for a force at the plate. But if it's hit to one of the Perez sisters, and they're actually playing in, so they're not playing double play depth. The thing so is, though, they know they're going to have opportunities to score. You don't want to do anything that, you know, you don't. You just want to limit the damage right now. Don't let GCU go on a crazy run here. Don't let them, you know, keep. keep don't let them feel real good about themselves. Let them have a one or two if you need to, but just don't want a big inning happen. Olson batting 333 on the season. Uh, she's uh, batting 500 with the bases loaded. Takes a strike on an off-speed pitch. Two and one is the count. Uh, Olsen, runners in scoring position, 333, but 500 with the bases loaded. Very talented left-handed hitter for the Lopes. Grower into a wind and the pitch. Hit foul down towards the UCLA dugout. Even the count, two and two with one out here in the second inning. 
at the Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic. Brower coming in. So far this season, runners are only hitting 115 against her. She's got a .5 ERA. So she twists, winds and delivers. Popped up, foul territory. Is there room? No, good effort by Aaliyah Jordan to try and get over there. But the ball with the wind carried foul. So we'll do it again. Two and two is the count, one out here in the inning. Tough situation for Grower, but not a situation she's been in, or not a, she's been in this situation before. Uh, they, all these pitchers, when they need to come in, they need to make a pitch, make a few pitches. They're all capable and they all have done it many of times in their careers and that's why they're in positions in a World Series type level of program in a level team here in 2018, that is to say the least. They are gonna be one of the favorites. Olsen had 11 RBIs last year and two doubles. Two uh, double will definitely tie the score for the Lopes. Good game thus far. Fouled off towards Yankee Stadium. And we'll do it again. Good at bat here from Olsen. Hanging in tough on Grower. Johanna starting to, starting to get her arm warm. She's probably could try to go the distance, I would assume. Have her pitch the rest of the way, save the rest of your arms for Team Japan. If you can get the rest of your game on a grower here, you'll take that. Hit hard into the gap in right center field. That's going to drop. That's going to be at least a double. Three runs are going to score for the Lopes. That's a triple for Olsen. She's going to try and come home on the errant throw. She'll go back to third, but a triple clears the bases, and the Lopes find themselves up four to three. What a change in momentum. You were worried that... First in the whack, and they find themselves ahead of UCLA, a top five program. Definitely a surprise here, a very, of course, UCLA heavy crowd, very quiet. So the Lopes... First base dugout is jumping. Lots of excitement down there. Grower catches her breath. She twists, winds, and delivers. Way above the backstop. Runner's going to try and score, and she will. Make it a 5 3. Foul tip. Gonzalez batting 233 early on in the season. Very talented catcher. A little bit deceiving on the statistics because she has a 361 on base percentage. It's a disciplined hitter, has taken some walks. They got a new life in this game. I mean, not that they didn't have a life before, but the energy is there. The momentum coming out, deflated a little bit by that big UCLA inning, and it's back. This Lopes team, this would be a season Change, I mean, I don't know about changing. It's a little early to be calling a season changing, but still, this would be a monumental win, one that we'll look back on, especially if they do make that run at a whack title like they're projected to do. A little bit outside for a ball. So two and two is the count here at the 2018 Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic. We're glad you joined us here on Flow Sports. Hope you guys will stick around for the UCLA Team Japan game after that. But we've got an exciting one here. Grand Canyon leading five to three. Foul ball back towards Fenway. I know mean, a lot of people out there, they're looking forward to seeing this Team Japan versus UCLA. Uh, I hope, I, I would highly doubt a Bruins team, a well-coached team would do that, but maybe they're overthinking a little bit, getting excited for uh, Team Japan, that kind of a matchup that they don't get all the time, but uh, they got one right in front of them that's giving them all they can handle here in the second, the Lopes. Hard hit ball to Tauta Lafua, and it gets past her into left field. That's going to be a base hit. So Grand Canyon gets another runner on. Tough hop for the UCLA third baseman. So I don't know how much longer we're going to see a growler at this point. Uh, that could add it, take another pitcher away. I don't think UCLA is going to want to go. They don't want to, but at this point, Grower is not. I mean, she did come in in a sticky situation, bases loaded, but. She's not making the pitches as of right now. I, 
and I, you know, you know, Coach, uh, when they're, she has those arms sitting there, young arms too, not just those seniors. She might go there earlier than, than you would see in past seasons. Gets past the catcher, Taylor Pack. I think Taylor Pack was confused on that. She was, I think she was expecting a fastball. Ball moved a little bit, and they're gonna talk in the circle about what just happened. Taylor Pack, of course, had the home run last night. Right-handed hitter, right-handed catcher. So Sierra Smith right here, one of their all whack returning first team players. Second on the team in batting. Uh, second in hit, second in run, second in triples. So you're looking at a talented lope right here with a now runner in scoring position. Winding the pitch a little bit high for a ball. So 2-0. Sierra Smith, 353 average. Starts a little bit up in the box. She's got her left foot on the chalk. Right heel almost at the chalk. Hard hit ball off the UCLA third baseman. That's going to ricochet over into left field. Grand Canyon runner decides to hold. But Sierra Smith, great base running. Is able to get into second. I think they're going to rule that a double. That ball was very hard hit. I love that decision when you're, uh, I would have said earlier, press. But when you have these opportunities, take as many as you can. But right now, you only have one out. You're hitting Grower really well right now. She's Foul ball hit into the crowd. So coming up for Grand Canyon, Lainey Gomez finds herself down 0-1. So far, she's 0 for 1, 278 average. Another lefty for Grand Canyon. It feels like she's one of the only ones on the slopes roster so far without a hit. Grower into her wind in the pitch. Rise ball. It's going foul, and it just goes over. Actually, ricochets back onto the field. So Gomez finds herself in a hole, 0 for 0 and 2. She's playing center field for the Lopes. She's got two runners in scoring position. She's batting 250 with runners in scoring position. Yeah, she's more of a run scorer rather than a run producer, but I wouldn't mind changing that title right here. Ooh. Strike three called. So UCLA gets a second out. Huge out for Grower. Could save a, at least a run if any sack, you know, sack situation that'll get it out now and that'll get Grower out of the inning I don't know what the plan is I'm sure they'll bring her out again see what she's got next inning see if I uh, can turn it around but that is a huge strikeout from Grower ball hit to the second baseman Perez over to Washington and that'll end the rally the Grand Canyon finds itself up five to three here in the it top of the starts set. Zoe Shaw off with a rise ball that truly rose so ball one Shaw coming into the game, batting 357. Let's see what they can come back with after a rough inning for Tafa Milo, Tamilo, and then Grower coming in struggling. So let's see if UCLA can get the momentum back just like they did in the bottom of the first with the bats. Uh, it starts right now though, Zoe. Aguilar coming into the game with a 4-5-1 ERA. That's a strike, so one and two is the count. She's given up two earned runs thus far. The Bruins have scored three. She has 20 pitches. Zoe Shaw has an on-base percentage of 471. Hits the ball hard down the first baseline, but well foul. And a real good game in their last victory against UAB. She went two for three. She was 0 for 2, though, against Santa Barbara earlier in the Mary Nutter. And against Fordham, she was also 0 for 3. Very good defensive player out in right field. Aguilar. So Nikki Gonzalez doing a good job trying to frame that pitch. We see it. People talking about that with catchers, whether it be softball or baseball, framing pitches and really keeping track of that. Nikki Gonzalez doing a pretty good job trying to get the strike call. 
little bit outside there for a ball. So that'll bring the count to full. Nobody out here in the bottom of the second inning. Grand Canyon leading the UCLA Bruins five to three. Hits the ball hard. Well, That's gonna drop into right field. Dropped into that no man's land between the second baseman and the right fielder. And so the Bruins got their leadoff runner on base and Kinsley Washington coming up. So Zoe Shaw after a little bit of a struggle so far here in the Mary Nutter Classic. She's been really good this season, but uh, coming out again after a good game against UAB, coming out again here with a base hit for the first runner on base for the Bruins here in the bottom of the second, just like they did last inning, got the first runner on. Bunt attempt for Washington, rolls foul. So 0-1 is the count. Kinsley Washington batting 368 on the season. She has an on-base percentage of 478 and a 526 slugging percentage. So a very talented player. That's stroked into center field. That's gonna drop, it's gonna get past the center fielder. Score a run. Shaw into third, they're gonna hold her up. But a double for Kinsley Washington, and the Bruins have two runners in scoring position with nobody out. I thought for a second they were going to send her, but then again, you have so many bats. You have so many good bats here, as you see this one ripped by Washington. She uh, that Holding them up, nobody out. Why risk uh, play at the plate? Keep it with Brianna Perez, top of the lineup coming up. Brianna Perez, the all-world freshman who already has double digits RBIs on the season, batting 438 with runners in scoring position. A hot shot in the first inning to shortstop. Way too fast to handle by uh, just like that. Back to so, the shortstop. Oof. Good play. Fantastic play. So that was Shay Smith diving grab, saving a couple RBIs. At least one Shea Smith just saved there. You never know what can happen once that ball gets out there. Uh, Brianna Perez's sister, Kylie Perez, the older of the Perez sister, the second baseman, she lines one foul. We'll see if Perez can knock in a couple runs. Runners still on second and third, one out in the inning. You don't have to worry if you're UCLA at this point. You're, you, know what your ta you know your talent level, you know you're capable of putting up 20 runs in an inning at any point, so. Aguilar doing a good job getting ahead of the count. Oh, and Maybe two. Maybe not 20, but you know. They, they're capable of, uh, they could average 20 runs a game if they hit the right stride. Kylie Perez batting 429 with runners in scoring position. Big opportunity here. Low and in the dirt. Good block by the catcher, Nikki Gonzalez. That saved a run at least. Aguilar with a 4.47 ERA. She's played against very tough competition. Very good pitcher with a bright future. Aguilar gets her sign, winds and delivers. Hard hit ball at the middle. That's a base hit. That'll score two runs. Kylie Perez around first. She's going to advance to second on the throw. Two Bruins score. And the Bruins have tied it up five to five. Well, there it is. Just like the first inning, we're kind of getting a, uh, what is it, what's the word where you're looking back at something that just happened. It feels like what just happened in the first inning. Right, which well, it is. We started five to five. Grand Canyon meeting at the circle. I'm sure they're telling each other, hey, we got this, okay, we got this. They're a very confident team. Like I've said a couple times, they're picked to finish first in the WAC. Aguilar into her wind, down in the dirt. Good block again by Nikki Gonzalez. She has her work cut out for her. Leah Jordan coming in, 591 average. She has had a monster Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic. And she had a monster shot earlier, probably the well, most well hit ball I've seen today to left and center earlier gonna try to find that big gap right now between the uh, left fielder and the center fielder. It's there and uh, she just she's gonna have her eye on that's for sure. So she's a left-handed batter. She's batting 571 with runners in scoring position. The Bruins have one run in scoring per, uh, position in Perez. Hard hit ball to right center field. She got all of it. It's gone. 
home run for Aaliyah Jordan. And the Bruins take a seven to five lead. Aaliyah Jordan. Uh, the most well two hit balls I've seen today. Now it is from Aaliyah Jordan. That one of course smoked to right and a little bit center. Uh, some real fine hitting and a real fine showing of not getting too not getting too worried about early runs from a uh, team that you just you know you're you're better than field. absolutely no doubt about that home run she's a red shirt freshman from chula vista so she has many more years at ucla just such a phenomenal talent and speaking of power uh brianna tau telefua is stepping in takes low for a ball Ta Telefua. So once you get through Jordan, which we, Aguilar, Aguilar hasn't been able to, then you got Ta Telefua. So fouled off. Two and one count to Ta Telefua. Struggled a little bit in this Mary Nutter Classic, but She's still batting 308, 654 slugging percentage. I don't, so, I don't have last year's Mary Nutter stats in front of me, but I feel like she hit at least two home runs last year. That's at least, I, she is. She lined that one, hit it about as hard as you can, but right to Shea Smith. I believe it was the famous Willie Mesa used to say, hit it where they ain't. Well, she hit it hard, but that's where Shea Smith was. Makes a good play on the line drive, and the Bruins have two outs. And the multi-talented Rachel Garcia is stepping in to the batter's box for the Bruins. A little bit outside for a strike right on the corner. So Aguilar ahead in the count, 0-1. Good pitch, especially after a good play by your first baseman. A chance to get out of this inning, 7-5. Uh, see if that offense can do what they've done the last two innings. Takes it on the outside corner, ahead in the count, 0-2. Oh two. two count. Just taps that foul. So Garcia stays alive. Good pitch by Aguilar, getting her to chase on that. Just getting a piece of that one. It was... You see her frame a couple pitches. Aguilar into her wide on the pitch. And that is just a little bit outside. I think uh, Gonzalez turning around to the umpire and saying, where was that? And she say, uh, the umpire says, uh, bring it up a little bit. So Garcia, the freshman of the year last season, second team All-American, and set to play in the 18 World Cup of Softball. Also the... Women's World Championships in 2018. So Rachel Garcia busy as a Bruin in Westwood. Also busy in her professional, well, soon to be, I'm sure soon to be a professional career. Uh, Olympic career, hopefully. Well on her way here with her time so far in the blue and yellow, baby blue. Aguilar trying to get out of the inning, limit the damage. Bruins are leading now, seven to five. Grand Canyon has had two leads. Wind up the pitch, off-speed pitch, just a little bit wide for a ball. Good pitch to Garcia. Couldn't get her to chase on it. Palmdale, that's, is that in? A little bit north of Los Angeles, about an hour bit. north. Okay, sure. She was the 2015 Gatorade Player of the Year. That is unbelievable. There's a lot of players in this country, and she was the best of 2015. Foul ball. Behind us, actually hits a tent right behind us. Rolls down and we'll do it again. Two and two in the second inning with two outs. Lots of twos on the board. Garcia steps into the batter's box. Last, last week has been an impressive week for Garcia on the mound. Aguilar with a wind and pitch, very high on the rise ball. So Garcia's worked the count full. Garcia, just a couple batters short of two perfect games this week. 
outside for a ball, and she works a walk. So Aguilar's laboring a little bit. Uh, her ERA has jumped up to 5.2, and one and two thirds innings pitched. She has given up six earned runs. She's gonna try and try and keep the Bruins off the board again with Bubba Nichols coming up. I don't know what you're so, gonna. If you're, what do you do if you're in that dugout for the Wolves? Do you go with a new pitcher? Do you no. try something different? Because it's not working right now against UCLA. They are having their way as much as well as the Lopes are playing on offense. If you can't stop the other team from scoring, you're obviously not going to win. So they uh, might need to figure something out with this pitching situation soon before uh, UCLA just, you know, before it gets out of hand later on. Gonzalez again, very aggressive move for the catcher, throwing back behind uh, Garcia to first base. Aguilar into her wine and the pitch. A little bit outside, Gonzalez again fakes down there. Two and one is the count to uh, Nichols. Aguilar trying to work her off-speed pitches uh, to try and get out of this inning. Coach calling a play. I, think, I know softball pitchers don't necessarily, their arms don't get tired per se this early, but she's thrown a lot of pitches, a lot. Like even Garcia's at bat, that was a lot of work to even get just a walk. It took her a long time to even put her on base. So it's... So 51 pitches for Aguilar thus far in the game. She's behind Bubba Nichols, three and one. Two outs still in the inning. That's a strike. So full Big count. strike. Full count working that outside corner. Gonzalez, of course, is doing a good job framing. She's bringing that ball back. I think this is Aguilar's inning to decide whether she's going to stay in the game. If she can't get out of this, pit, you know, if she can't get out of this uh, at bat, and you're going to put two on for the Bruins. Uh, it's it's just going to be difficult. I already given up, like you said, six earned runs, another unearned. A Ag difficult situation here. Aguilar has a very good off-speed pitch. That seems to be her best pitch. We'll see if she goes to it on this full count. It was an off-speed pitch, hit foul towards some fans. Actually ricochets off uh, one of the food vendors behind us at Big League Dreams. Well, if you bring the ball back, we'll take a burger on your way, if you don't mind. <laughs> beautiful Get lunch city. time here in beautiful Cathedral City. Sun's out, it's warmer. I was shivering can be, as it can be earlier. I could not control my shivering. Now it's beautiful. Another foul ball hit by Bubba Nichols. So another long at bat. Aguilar just trying to find that pitch. So it was a fastball on that one. I'm thinking she's probably going to go to the off speed again. Let's see if she does. Wind and delivers off speed. That's hit into right field. That's going to be a base hit. But Garcia's going to try and make the turn. She goes back to second wisely. But the Bruins again, they have two runners on and two outs here in the bottom of the second inning. I think we're going to see a meeting coming up here real quick in the circle. Figure out what are we going to do. Uh, really good job by Bubba Nichols. Obviously, Aaliyah Jordan, unbelievable hits. But those last two at-bats between Nichols and Garcia, they were so patient. They made Aguilar pitch. Every pitch that she could get in there had to be perfect if it wanted to strike. And here they sit now with more chances to add runs here in the second. A high-scoring game. Uh, if you pick the over in this one, uh, I think you're probably going to hit that bet. If I, would have to, I don't know if they do over-unders in softball. Oh, that's a thing, but... I'm pretty sure they don't. You can find If you want to bet it, I'm sure you can find it somewhere. <laughs> so Taylor Pack stepping in. She's out of Sutter, California. And if you're into California history, Sutter is where they first discovered gold in California. Hits the ball hard to right field. It is playable when playing with it a little bit. Right fielder over, makes a catch, and that'll do it. But not before the Bruins jump out to a two-run lead. They scored early and often in that inning. Seven to five is Seven your score. Five here in the third inning. High scoring game. UCLA sends out Grauer for a second inning and she starts off Keaton with a strike. There we go, Grauer. She struggled last inning. No, no debating that. She came out uh, with this tough situation. Bases loaded. Struggled with that point, but I knew it. 
Throw the right-handed hitter. Very wide stance. Grauer, very high on that rise ball. So 1-0 is the count here with one out. Grand Canyon scored in the first two innings to take two leads. Still a lot of excitement in that dugout. They're a very confident team. They think they can get right back in this game without a problem. Well, they're not, they're not even getting right back in it. They're still in it. Just two runs. Uh, they've been really good at the plate. They know they can hit Grauer. They have last inning. They've put runners on first and second, first two innings as well. So they're confident. Like you said, they, they, they're plenty in this game. A little bit high for a ball. Two, uh, three and oh is the count. So the Grand Canyon left fielder, 0 for 1 today, struggling a little bit at the plate, uh, 107 batting average so far. Brower has gone solid inning. There's a strike, 3 and 1. She has one strikeout thus far. She's also given up a double and a triple. So nobody on, one out here in the top of the third inning. Brower and Orwine pitch. There's another strike swinging. So that makes the count full, three and two. Grand Canyon, five runs, five hits, and an error. Very talented team. Winds and pitches. It's hit over into left field. That's going to drop for a base hit. Well, so there it is again. So after Grower got out, got that first out. This one a little bit more difficult. A good at bat, not doing too much with it. Sending it left field, dropping it down, and there's another base runner. And the Lobes, we know as of today at least, they have been very good with runners on bases. Still staying very much aggressive at the plate even when uh, in the situation, uh, yeah, just the, in this situation. But attempt by Kay, uh, she pulls back and takes a strike, 0 and 1. So Grand Canyon has had runners on in every single inning. Left-handed hitter is Kay, she's got a 304 average. I can tell you, I don't know this stat off the top of my head, but I bet you there's very few teams that UCLA has played so far this season that can say that they put on put runners on in the first three innings. That is an impressive performance or impressive showing so far at the at the plate. Taylor Kay has been part of that one. She had a big RBI earlier. She takes strike three. So she was halfway out of the box trying to get a slap hit, but three strikes in a row. And Takes another strike, 0 and 2. She finds herself in a hole. It'll be interesting to see if Grauer can get herself into a groove. Last night in the shutout, uh, she went long stretches where she didn't allow a base runner. It's kind of hard coming out of the bullpen after pitching the night before. A little bit low, good block uh, by Pack. 1 and 2 now is going to be the count with two outs here in the third inning. Still, I mean, she's obviously had the got the outs or the two outs so far, but she's not the quite the growler that you hear about the, the like yesterday. Very, you know, her great performance. She's just missing a lot of these uh, low pitches. She's trying to sneak in there. That one a little high. She just doesn't have that same accuracy today. But we're all not. We all don't have our best A game every single day. She, she's still fantastic. Just today, today's been a little struggle in the two innings she's came in here. Not quite two innings yet of relief. Shea Smith showing a lot of discipline laying off Tough that rise ball. Off. Two and two, she's worth the count. Two and two with two outs in the inning. Grounder rolls foul. So we'll do it again. Two and two with two outs here in the inning. Grand Canyon has a runner on first. Both teams, they've been so patient. That's what I'd like to see. They take what's there, take what's there for them right there. Just, you know, get a little contact, stay alive, make Grower come back and Pitchers pitch something that you might like better. So they're just they've been fighting well and they're taking pitches well with that strike. Swung on and missed strike three. So Grower gets out of it, allows a base runner. 
Bruins still lead seven First to First time they've came to the top of an inning with the lead after the Lobes answered in the second. Zoe Shaw will step in for the Bruins, right-handed hitter batting 400 on the season. Aguilar trying to settle down. She is a very good pitcher for the Lopes, pitching against a very good UCLA team. Finds herself ahead 0-2 in the count. It would kill your average. I, I would be thinking, oh, I gotta play UCLA today. My average is gonna go way down. That's, uh, I'm sure that's not what they think about. They want the challenge of playing a team like UCLA, but still, like, if you give up, you know, she's given up seven, six runs in, well, six earned in not even three innings of work yet. Well, that's uh, it's not gonna do so well for your overall ERA. So down the line and well foul. So Brianna Aguilar from Tucson, Arizona. She went to South Point Catholic High School. She's only a sophomore, so she's got a bright future ahead of her. If you look, Grand Canyon has a couple seniors on the team, but mostly it's a young team. Very talented, bright future ahead of them. It says a lot that they were picked number one. When you have a young team that gets that high of you know, high respect from the coaches in your league. And so the coaches, I think, know best. I think you can't look at anything else except for what the coaches think. And to have that respect from the coaches, you know, you, you, you hope it doesn't get, they don't get too confident. Or they when they get in, you know, like they have struggled lately. So hopefully they didn't uh, kind of read those headlines a little too much. So that ball, Zoe Shaw hits foul. So she's staying alive. She's uh, really fighting. Long Great. at bats, all game long so far. So the University Grand Canyon actually started in 1949. Their softball program, relatively new. It's gonna be their first year eligible for postseason play. First year also the basketball team can make the March Madness. I believe, did they make it last year? No, I think this might be the second year they can make it. But. I know they are eligible. Like you could see a Grand Canyon University, which I be honest, you don't hear a ton about. Um, you could see them in a in a March Madness type, or like you said, they they're eligible for these World Series and these different um, Division One type of finishes to their season that everybody hopes for. So it's kind of cool. It's something that can pitch well to the school when you're trying to get people to come there. You're playing top level. You're playing the best teams in the country. You're Division One. Hard hit by Kinsley Washington, but right to the first baseman, and we've got two down. This so is what Aguilar needed right here, quick. She had had to work last inning between Garcia, between Zoe. It was it 69 was on the season. Takes high for a ball, one and zero. She's one for two so far today. Her sister two for two. That's three for four. We'll just sit, you know. We'll three. always loop them. No, they probably get that all the time. When you hear one prez, you got to hear about the others. So we'll give them both. They're both separately. Sisters are not sisters. Very talented. Uh, they would just be getting just as much attention if they were separate because they really are the real deal. And Grand Canyon has sisters on their team, Shea Smith and Sierra Smith. Yeah, we should see them in a little bit. We'll get some video of them. They are yeah, they're maybe not the high publicity as the Perez's, but it's still cool. You get to play with your your sibling, get to play the game you guys love growing up. I'm sure their dad was a softball player, their mom. I'm sure somebody in their family really loved the sport, uh, helped them find that love as well. And here they are, Division One players, both at Phoenix and in Westwood. So 7-5 UCLA here in the third. Hard hit ball, that's gonna find a gap and Perez is gonna have at least two up against the wall. She's gonna stop at second. Good throw by the Grand Canyon right fielder. That was Taylor Kay to hold Perez at a double. But UCLA has a runner in scoring position with two outs. So here we go. Now she has to pitch thinking about players like her sister, Kylie, coming up right here. Kylie Perez fakes a bunt. Good stop by Nikki Gonzalez on a ball in the dirt. Keeps the runner on second. We've got, said her name a number of times, but rightfully so. Nikki Gonzalez is playing a very good game behind the plate. Seen some good catcher catching play 
in our two games this morning, or our two games so far, including this one. First game, both catchers saved a couple, saved definitely some runners moving, but also saved a run or two. They catcher position is maybe undervalued at times, but there's times when it really comes up huge, and she's playing well, like you said, Gonzalez. Kylie Perez, two for two today. Her average has jumped up to 407. Trying to close the gap with her sister, who's batting 485. A good Beautiful. bunt attempt right in front of the pitcher. There's not going to be a play. No chance at all. That is textbook. That is how they teach it. Aguilar, I've got to be a little bit of a frustrated Aguilar uh, with a, you know, this this is going to be a tough situation with I, Aaliyah Jackson. Of course, we know what she just did last inning with the huge home run. Aaliyah Jordan is... Jordan, excuse me. Si uh, 609 average. She's two for two today. I don't, I don't know if she's been retired in the last two days. I'm going to have to go back and check the box score. But a home run, like you said earlier, fooled on that pitch, the off-speed pitch. So she's behind 0-2. Runners on the corner here. He Bruins with a 7-5 lead. I know, obviously, you got uh, number 33 coming up, so you can't think of, I mean, you, she's too good to put runners on for, but do you consider? Ooh, just, just, just a little just bit Just because low. she's not playing as well, uh, Tafaluya. Uh, Tau, Tafalua. <laughs> God, I, I'm going to do that once or twice. I'm sorry. That is a tough, tough word. I don't say her name very often. So Leah Jordan, big opportunity here with runners at the corners. I wouldn't pitch her anything close to the strike zone. Off-speed pitch, it's a little bit low, trying to get her to chase, like you were saying. Leah Jordan with runners in scoring position, 625 average, that'll get it done. And with two outs, a 429 average. She has a double and a home run so far today. Aguilar winds and pitches. Hit towards the first baseman. She gets it, tags the base, and that'll do it. Fantastic so pitch there. If you like softball, this is the type of game you absolutely love. We're glad you joined us on Flow Sports. Could have two conference champions that we're watching right now. The WAC favorite and the UCLA, probably the Pac-12 favorite. A little slap hit back to Grauer. Grauer throws her out. So we got one down. Early on in the inning, Grauer trying to settle down after coming in in the second inning, struggling slightly, but uh, she really settled down. And that'll bring up Nikki Gonzalez, a very talented catcher for Grand Canyon, one for two today. Grauer into the wine and the pitch, starts it off with a strike, fastball on the inside corner, 0 and 1. Grand Canyon University, it has been around since 1949. There's 17,500 people go to Grand Canyon. It's a very, it's a popular school around the Phoenix area for, uh, it's, I don't what's commuter, that's the best word. It's like a, almost a Cal State Fullerton almost where kids from, there's so many kids obviously around the Fullerton area, the high school, you know, it's just a, such a populated area and they decide, you know, it's cheaper to stay home, go to school. It's, and that's a lot, a lot of people do at Fullerton. That's what they do at Grand Canyon. But it hasn't stopped both those programs. Uh, Grand Canyon from working their way up to Division I and Fullerton, obviously one of the top baseball programs in the country. Some other sports also very good programs in. Grower ahead one and two on Nikki Gonzalez. Gonzalez on base percentage, 378. Very disciplined hitters, drawn a number of walks. Fouls out one down the third base line. And Grand Canyon University is also very popular. They have a very good online system. And so you see a lot of people going to with degrees from Grand Canyon who haven't actually been in Phoenix. They take the classes online. So an up and coming university really working on their sports program. Sports, and, yeah, sports is a marketing tool to students. There's no debating that. We see it all over the country. It's why Nick Saban's worth the money he's at. Tough hop for Perez. She makes it look easy throwing across the diamond. And in we the got top of the fourth inning. You know, we've mentioned the Perez sisters and one of the Smith sisters, Sierra Smith, is coming 
up to bat. She's one for one today with a 371 average. They're from Verado High School, which is a newer community out towards Buckeye, Arizona. It's a good golf, good uh, golf course. Hard hit foul. The reason I'm kind of avoiding that is I think <laughs> I played my worst round of golf I've ever played at that golf nah, course. Now you probably called in sick uh, to your to teaching job when you went out there one day. No? Not, not true, getting, not getting, true. You know your boss is probably listening to this. Uh, the... Uh, yeah, but very frustrating. <laughs> yeah, you stumbled in your words, so it must One be One of true. the most beautiful courses I've ever played. Hard hit ball to left field. Jordan going back and can't get to it. It rolls foul. That is a tough place to uh, catch a ball over there in left field with the wind blowing how it is. It's calmed down a little bit, but it's still enough to affect the flight of the ball. So we'll get a new ball in play for Grauer. Now that thing was cruising too fast and too hard to be affected by the wind that much on that one. I was sailing out either way, but you are right. The wind, not as much of a factor right now, but still, it comes and goes. Just like our runs for, well, the leads for both these two teams, they have came and go twice already for both these teams. So one and two. Brower tried to get her to chase to no avail, so that'll even the count. Two and two here with two outs in the top of the fourth inning. Great game between UCLA and Grand Canyon. Back and forth, back and forth. Grauer looks at her wrist, gets her pitch. She twists and delivers. Hard hit ball again to left field. Nichols will call off Jordan. She'll make the catch and that'll do it. Easy, one, two, three. So one, two, three inning for Grauer. She's really settled down. We're gonna go to the bottom. Yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna call in sick to go golf, at least have a performance of your life. Come on, Wes. Tao Telefua is gonna <laughs> step in New for the Bruins. She hits the ball hard up the middle. Good play by the second baseman, Lorian Olson, to throw her out. Very had solid a play down. by the infield. I think, I think they had a shift. They had to have. That was. She played a little bit more towards second. That's. When you see when a player's been around as much as uh, number 33, obviously you can get some video on her and see what she likes, some of her tendencies. But this one, uh, she was in the exact right spot to make that play and made the play. Garcia stepping in, uh, 308 hitter thus far. Disciplined on her last at bat. Uh, she is 0 for 1, but she did draw a walk on her last at bat, battled back in the count against Aguilar, who's also settled down a little bit. A very good pitcher for Grand Canyon. She gets her sign, goes into her wind and delivery. Garcia hits the ball hard. It's kind of uh, shifting foul. We'll see if it stays in play. Good effort by the left fielder, Dowdell, but she isn't able to come up with it. So we'll do it again. Too Her much base like She smacked in the wall. Uh, didn't look so good right away for her. So it was a good smart move pulling up at the end. Outside. So that'll make it one and two. The count on Rachel Garcia. who She's a designated player today. We might see her later. I don't know if UCLA has announced who's going to start against Team Japan. Now, if you're UCLA, do you want to go with you know, your best, or do you want, you know, because you're, you're not getting credit for this win. It's not going towards your potential World Series ranking or anything like that. So would you want to use your good stuff? You know, do you want to use it against a Team Japan where the game doesn't really matter, the outcome? Uh, you, you know, that's a very good question, but at the same time, this is a chance for international competition, and you want to compete against the best. So we'll see. And some of these girls, a lot of these girls, including right here. Well, there's a uh, long fly ball yeah. to right field. Good catch. Well, including Garcia, I was saying that she's playing world type of uh, type level of softball at this moment. She plays for Team USA, so you know they want to play well. Taylor K showing good range and uh, makes a very good catch out there in right field. So we have two outs in the inning and coming up to bat for the Bruins, Bubba Nichols. She hits a single over to the left side. 
Actually a great job by the shortstop for Grand Canyon University. It's Shea Smith. Shea so Smith uh, showing a good amount of range to stop that ball. But Bubba Nichols able to beat it out. So Nichols is uh, two for two today. Now, no, make it three for three today, raising her average up to 483. That'll bring up Taylor Pack, who's 0 for 2 today. Pack, of course, has been playing really good defensively uh, behind the plate for UCLA. She's got a runner on first with two outs. Aguilar winds and delivers, hard hit, but foul down the left field line. And she finds herself in a hole 0 and 2. So Grand Canyon trying to get out of the inning. Taylor Pack still batting 643 on the season. Outside, outside corner, that's a strike. So 0-2 is the count to Pack. UCLA has 12 hits on the game. 12 hits on the game for the Bruins. Grand Canyon has six. We've got a good one, back and forth, back and forth. Bottom of the fourth inning here. Hard hit ball down the line. That's gonna drop and go into the corner. Nichols up to third. She's gonna stop there. Good throw by Grand Canyon to get it back. Dowdell was able to get it to the cutoff man and they got it home to Gonzalez. But the Bruins have two runners in scoring position, second and third, and we still have two outs. Well, this wind. Uh, can... So throw down from Gonzalez over to the third baseman to no avail. And stepping in for the Bruins, Julie Rodriguez. Struggled a little bit in her career. She's uh, coming in and pinch hitting. Takes inside for a ball. What's interesting about uh, Julie Rodriguez, uh, when you look at the media guide, it says that at her high school in New Jersey, she set every pitching and hitting record at her high school in Inglewood, New Jersey. Sw fooled on that one, swung on and miss. There is a reason why we don't see as many Division I players in the East Coast. They just don't get that opportunity to play as much as players from Southern California, players from Arizona, when they get to get out when it's January, they have games already. They get to play travel teams. When you're East Coast, when you're Midwest, the only time you get to play those type of games is if you go, in, uh, go inside, indoor stadiums. So she strikes out, Julia Rodriguez steps out. Good to try and uh, get on the board and get back in this game. I think if you would, yeah, I think if you would have came into this game and said, for GCU, you could be down two runs, you're at bat, in the fifth inning, I think you take it. So here they sit, chance. That's all you can ask for is a chance. Gomez comes up to slap at it. Instead, she'll take a ball one and oh. So far today, uh, the center fielder's 0 for two. Still batting 270. As a, as a leadoff hitter in an inning, she's only batting 200. Grauer into her wind and pitches very low. It gets past pack. So two and zero. Oh. If you're, I mean, I don't know the situation with her specifically, but if you're a coach and your leadoff hitter comes out of the gate in a year and continues to struggle, uh, do you, when at some point do you have to make a decision to either move her down the lineup or, you know, not her in specific. I don't, I don't know her situation, but you know, what would you do? How long do you wait for a leadoff? What would you say, Wes? Of, uh, I'd say you wait until uh, conference play. At least because conference the, play. Reason being, these tournaments, you're going to face a lot of very solid competition. Of course. So it's uh, early on the season. So until you get into the meat of the season, I wouldn't make any changes. But You would agree, though, that the leadoff is your most important. It's almost yes. more important than your cleanup or your, your uh, three-hole. They set the table, that's for sure. Gomez uh, battling in this at bat. Three balls, one strike. 
as we hear overhead. We have a Palm Springs airport not too far away from here, so every once in a while we hear one of the jets uh, fly over. Ground ball to the third baseman. Tough ball. Perez Great. is able to stop it. Tao Talafua just got over ahead. Perez kept it from going into the outfield. But Gomez finds herself right there. on base. Uh, right, right to third base. And now here they sit, a runner on, only down two in the fifth, just like just like you could ask for. You're, you're right in this thing. Dietrich takes a little bit low. She's over two today. Very good batting average early on in the season. Uh, batting 429. But I have to preface it. I said it before, I said it again. Still very early on in the season. So don't read too deep into it. Brower with the off-speed pitch. Yeah, but they That's do definitely ball. take these this consideration in for seedings a little bit. Like oh, when, absolutely. When These you compare teams like Oklahoma playing, you know, UCLA, that didn't happen. But if you had that happen today, or you know, you have to take that into consideration, even if it was early in the year. If you look at uh, some of the teams that these uh, schools play here at the Mary Nutter Classic, that's another ball, 3-0. and You look at the competition for a, a team that's up and coming, like a Grand Canyon University, Absolutely, it is a great way to get uh, some experience. And I think uh, people take notice when you go later on in the season. Uh, yeah, when you go later on in the season, if you look at who they played uh, thus far on the season, uh, they've played Oklahoma twice. And even though they lost eight to one and 10 to nothing, uh, that's the number one Oklahoma team. We're talking about uh, girls that are going to play on the Olympic team, girls that are going to play in professional fast pitch leagues. So Grand Canyon University, they're an up and coming program and come tournament time, they're going to be dangerous. It's a low Great a at bat. Patience, patience, patience. Here they go. You know, she gave a little signal to her teammates. They're like, you know, we're ready. Uh, but going back to your point, does, how much does strength the schedule matter? Is, I mean, they, they can't control the Mary Nutter Classic scheduling, I don't believe. I don't think they have a say in who they get to play. But is there is, is that factored in? Absolutely, Go when it comes uh, time to you seed. To. Yes, it is. Absolutely. So two runners on for Grand Canyon. Good job by the, uh, by the batter, Keaton, to lay off that pitch. Keaton 0 for 2 today, He's batting 222 on the season. Brower with five balls in a row. So she was cruising, struggling a little bit this inning. Hard hit foul ball towards a, sack, a snack stand. And the people in the snack stand almost got hit. Thank goodness everybody's okay. The number one recruiting class in the country, the UCLA Bruins from 2017. That was as of last November, so. They're a team that, they're the team that teams want to gauge their strength of schedule on, to get on their schedule. So, hey, if you're GCU and you're on the border of getting a four seed or something like that later on, you're going to be like, well, do you look at our, do you remember the UCLA game? We can hit with them. We can, you know, I'm not going to call an upset here yet, but there's definitely, there's that window that could happen today. Well, we have... They've uh, lost to Syracuse 9-8 in 10 innings. That was a tough loss in their last game. You're going to need your win your whack. You're right. gonna, I think you need to for sure win the whack to have any chance. But at that point, you know, if you're number two in the whack and you just lose a championship, maybe you know, there's an outside ch chance at an app large, and that could come through a game like UCLA. If they could get this victory, of course, it's a resume staple. But even playing it close is, a, is an upgrade. Ball in the dirt, and all the runners are going to advance. So now Grand Canyon has. Out. So you wonder at this point, two and one, do you pitch around this hitter to put, load the bases and get a force out at the plate? Hard hit ball to center this field. Nichols run. goes back, and she's going to make the catch. Both runners will tag up and advance, and Grand Canyon has cut the lead to one. It's seven to six. And there's a lot of excitement in the Grand Canyon dugout. As there should be. That is textbook softball. You were patient up. Who would have thought that in the fifth inning? Hard hit ball, but I think Perez is going to come up and get it. No, Gotta the sit. left fielder comes up. That's Jordan to make the catch. 
And so Grand Canyon isn't able to plate that tie and run, not deep enough uh, for a sack fly. But they still have a runner on third with two outs in the inning. And up to the plate comes Taylor Kay, who has walked today. Two outs in the, uh, in the inning thus far. Grower, indoor wine and pitch. Kay comes up like she's gonna slap at it. Takes a strike, 0-1. Oh she's batting 292 on the season. Uh, struggled with runners in scoring position. Uh, she still doesn't have a hit with runners in scoring position. See if she could change it right here and tie the game. Slaps at it, gets over to the shortstop. Perez across the diamond and gets her. But Grand Canyon gets a run and they pull within one. It's seven to six here at the Mary Nutter Collegiate for Classic. For Premier Girls Softball, the best, well the travel ball, the best travel ball teams, they play with that Premier Rawlings glove. So the future game is here. And that's gonna be a little bit high to Kinsley Washington. She's leading off for the Bruins. She's one for two thus far. She's had a good season, not only at the plate, but also uh, playing defense at first base. She's made a couple good plays in this Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic. She sneaks up like she's gonna slap. Instead, she takes another ball, two and oh. Pretty important here for the, the Bruins to answer, wouldn't you say? Because if, if they can add two more runs on, that's deflating for a Grand Canyon team that has played so well, that has kept fighting back. If they can't, if, if UCLA does what they have done the last few times UCLA's had a momentum, that would be tough, uh, tough hill to climb for the, for the Lobes. Brianna Aguilar is really setting, uh, settled down. Two scoreless innings, the last two in the third and fourth. So she's kept Grand Canyon in the game, doing a great job. Absolutely in this game, and she, she has been fighting. She's a fighter. All the counts have been long. But and she she's doesn't able, give up on these. She keeps going. I think her best pitch today has been her off-speed pitch. We'll see what she goes to here. Two and two. Ground ball to the third baseman across the diamond, and we've got one down. Sierra Smith uh, makes the play. So that'll bring up the top of the lineup. Rihanna Perez coming in for the Bruins. So we mentioned the sisters. Sierra Smith made that play. She's the third baseman. Shea Smith is the shortstop. For the Perez sisters, Brianna Perez is the shortstop, and Kylie Perez is the second baseman. So interesting that both teams have two sisters on the infield. So Perez takes a strike, 0 and 1. She's two for three today. A 485 average for the lefty. So Aguilar gets her sign. She winds and delivers. Off speed pitch. That's hit into right field for a base hit. So Perez looks like she was sitting back waiting for that off speed pitch and she smacks it into right field. So just a little conversation with the uh, That's UCLA. UCLA. the country. Is there a lot of pressure on this team, would you say? I, absolutely. Think they've underachieved, is underachieving a fair no, word? No, Have no, they? no, no, no. They, they've gotten themselves to the uh, Women's College Four World years Series. Four years in a row. But at some point that title, they probably want it so bad, and then you probably press for it a little too much at certain points. And I'm just, I mean, I, this team has every piece that you need to do it this year, and I, I could see it happening. I think what Perez has built is impressive. So Kylie Perez steps in, the second baseman. Off speed pitch, a little high for a ball. So 2 0 is the count to Perez. Last year, that was a tough game against LSU. It was the opening of the World Series. They, I mean, one of the most controversial World Series calls that we've had in a while. Did not go the way of the Bruins. New year, new beginning, and a, still a stacked roster. And UCLA is probably one of the easier schools to recruit to uh, across the country. And they've been putting so much. I, I don't know specifically about softball, but overall in the athletic department, they have gone, they've taken a whole new step that they had lacked in a while. They are putting new facilities, new all this stuff. Hard hit to the second baseman, trying to turn to. Good play by the second baseman. That would be Olsen Three on the game, batting 583. Has just had a unbelievable Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic. And there looks like line drive, but right to the left fielder. She hit that ball about as well as you can. 
but she hit it right to the left fielder. Good play by Dowdell, and that's going to end the is excited. I do not think that they wanted to use Garcia today if they did not have to, Coach Perez. I think if they could have got away with getting a win against GCU without using her, they would have done it. And this is what Grand Canyon's done. Ooh. Great play, Brianna Perez. Good effort, slap hit for the leadoff hitter, Shea Smith. And Brianna Perez comes up. It just gets over Tao Telefua's head. Brianna Perez coming in, dives and makes the catch. What a play. Let's see if we can see that again on the replay. Wow, what an effort. To say she has a future is an understatement. Big swing and a miss right there by Lorian Olson. So the Lobes, two more chances or two more at bats, two more times, uh, getting a fresh three outs to see if they can pull off this upset that they have tried very hard and achieving today. It has been a great effort, but right now Garcia, she just might be too much. She is so far two. Two batters, two outs, too easy. Well, not exactly easy. It was a great play before, but still, Garcia is going to be a tough one to get those that uh, the two runs you need to take the lead. So Garcia takes a look at her wrist to get her pitch. Two down here in the top of the sixth inning. 7-6 Seven, Bruins pitch, lead. Rise ball strike, 0-1. You know, we got a beautiful setting. As cold as it was this morning with the wind, you see Mount San Jacinto in the background, a little bit of snow over there in Big Bear. You can see the mountains on the dis in the distance. Clouds rolling in. Feels very nice right now. And Garcia looks very nice right now. 0-2 oh is the count. And it's tough because they're not going to have any time to try to adjust to her. You're only going to get six outs, or now you only have four outs. So to adjust on Garcia and try to make any adjustments for these hitters is going to be almost impossible. Nikki Gonzalez fouls it off towards Fenway. So she finds herself in a hole, 0-2. Oh uh, Gonzalez batting a 250 on the season, but is a little bit misleading because she gets on base a lot via walk and hit by pitch. 368 on base percentage. Garcia, indoor wind, and the pitch fouled off again. And Gonzalez didn't miss that by much. Usually you can tell if you're not familiar with uh, softball or baseball, when a ball comes off the bat and it's like a line drive back to the cage, that means she just missed it by inches. So we'll see if she can straighten it out, tie the game up for Grand Canyon. Garcia into the wind, the pitch off speed, gets her swinging strike three. So Garcia comes in in relief. Olympic big journey to Tokyo 2020 can begin. Tao Talafua is stepping in for the Bruins. The very powerful right-hander is 0 for 3 today. Fouls it off her foot, and she looks like she's hurt. That does not feel good. I've done that a number of times. She almost, I think it was the first inning, took one right. It would have probably been probably to the dugout, but she's kind of shaking her head. Yep, she's going to stay back in no, there. No, she's That's tough. Awesome. You know she'll be back in there. That is awesome. It's good to see. Not she's her first, right. not her last. Yeah. She's out of Carson, California. She's a junior, 5'6", bats right, fields right. Aguilar winds and delivers, a little bit low for a ball. So one and one is the count. Sun is dipped behind a cloud, so we're getting back to a little bit of shade. Temperature drops, it's a lot colder than we're used to in Cathedral City. Off-speed pitch in the dirt. So that's two and one is the count to Tao Talafua. It's got to be a little tough for GCU. They're probably thinking about that fifth inning when they had the runner on third, a chance to put that tying run in. Now they're down a run. They've got to think about playing Garcia in the bottom half of the inning. It's going to be, excuse me, the top half. It's going to be tough. But right now it starts with Aguilar getting out of here, just a one-run ball game, and set themselves up for hopefully a little, well, for them, hopefully a little uh, seventh inning magic. UCLA third baseman just missed that one down the line, hit it about as hard as she can, about five feet foul. So Aguilar will do it again. Even count, two and two, winds and delivers, off-speed pitch a little bit low. And she's done a good job with that off-speed pitch. I think it's been her most successful pitch. Tao Talafua 
Full count. We'll see what Aguilar does. She goes into her wind and delivery. Hard hit up the middle. That's going to be a base hit. That'll be Tao Telefua's first hit of the game. And the Bruins have the leadoff hitter on. You could get her in, uh, get her uh, runner, would you say? They'll, yep, there she comes, and right here, number 13. Yeah. So that'll be Amani Johnson. Amani Johnson. Out of, out of Carson, California. Both from Carson, California, ironically. See, did they play together in high school? Same high school? They're this both is, juniors. Well, King drew at Magnet High School. That is where Johnson went. Let's check out Brianna. Let's see where she went. Carson High School. So probably rivals. I'm sure they went against it once or twice in the high school days. And now both on the same path of trying to get UCLA their first national championship since 2010. Get to their fifth straight World Series. A little bit inside for a ball to Rachel Garcia. Garcia, of course, came in uh, earlier. I kind of wish the Mary Nutter was a bracket type of tournament a little bit, don't you? To like, a certain degree. Like a championship game. See, like a UCLA play one of the other top teams, even though GCU, very good opponent. But it would be cool to see, like, an Oklahoma last year play a UCLA from this year. It would be, be interesting to watch. I will say this, this is the Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic is the premier, premier. tournament. At least early on in the year. Classic, early on in the year, only rivaled by the Women's College World Series. Gonzalez almost throws behind Johnson, but to no avail. And you see it by next week, I, I saw a number of schools, I think at least five. I know Wisconsin, obviously, I'm Wisconsin ties, so I saw that. They were not here. They've never been here before. They're now making the trip. So it's becoming even a more popular destination for some of these programs to see where they match up. See, what, what are we looking at here in our 2018 season? Do we, have, do we have the pieces? Are they ready for conference? Are they ready for everything after that? Aguilar finds herself in a hole behind three and one to Garcia. Garcia 0 for 2 today. Average has dipped down below 300. Indoor wind and the pitch. Foul ball down the left field line. Got a couple of cameramen down there, down the third base line. I think that he's with UCLA, one of them. And uh, they do a good job. They Try to get all their schools coverage on Twitter, on Facebook, all those different social media sites. That's where it's at now is the in-house video production staff. That's how you get recruits nowadays, too. It's, it's, it is a factor whether teams have bought into it yet or not. Hard hit ball to right field. Kay with a catch. She gets it in. And we've got one down. So UCLA, widely known for their film school, we got a couple that's, of really good that's film more schools. That's USC, isn't it? Uh, USC, UCLA, not, not so much Chapman, UCLA. They have, they Cal have, Arts. UCLA have, is about the about the doctors and the, the health care, isn't it? Not true. Top no? three film schools, NYU, UCLA, USC. Really? Hard hit single into left field. I never hear about for UCLA's Bubba Nichols. film school. Look it up. Got the computer well, I will. There. I will there, Wes. <laughs> Behind the plate. You need to get out of this. Just a one run against Garcia. To even get one is going to be tough, let alone having to go multiple, have to come up with multiple hitter, hits with runners in scoring position. It's going to be difficult, so got to get out of this inning for GCU. Well, we'll see if the infield can turn two here that, to get them out of the inning. So if they can draw a ground ball, that Not would the be most huge. speedy runners on the base. So, well, at least at first and at home plate right now. Fly ball, center There's field. One or two. Almost threw behind Johnson and got her. Center fielder, Laney Gomez, with a good play. She catches it. Catches Quarles. Just a freshman from Cerritos, California. Malia Quarles, uh, pinch hitting for Julie Rodriguez. Number 10 for the Bruins. Right-handed hitter. Aguilar into a wine pitch. A little bit low for a ball, 1-0. So Quarles batting 500 on the season thus far. Not bad for a freshman. Not a bad way to 
welcome yourself to the roster. 667 with runners in scoring position. Bruins have one in scoring position. A it's a freshman that football. first couple, like that first few weeks. I know it's still early, but you got you just want to prove yourself so much. You want to say, hey, I'm worthy of this these at bats, and to be able to come out and bat 500. It's, there's a lot of pressure on these freshmen when they first get to campus, get to the team. So I like to see when freshmen do well early. At least it sets the tone that that they're that they're capable of being uh, being a big part, even when it gets past, uh, it gets into the meat of the season. So foul ball right there, it makes it two and one, the count. We're here in the bottom of the sixth inning, Bruins with a one run lead. Hit to the third baseman, Smith will step on the bag and that'll be it. So here come the Lopes, the Lopes. Last out. She has, a, she has a very tough task ahead of her, facing Rachel Garcia. Garcia starts her off with a strike, foul back. And Garcia came in in the six was great. A quick one, two, three, and now they're in. She's got one more inning, and she's gonna lock up their tenth win, or if they can, they'll lock up their tenth win of the year. Stay undefeated. It's gonna come down to double zero. She can hit, and now she's in position to close this one out. Smith swings and misses. Finds herself in a hole. O oh and two. Smith will be followed by Gomez and Dietrich. So Garcia looks at her wrist. She's got a couple pitches to weigh, so we'll see what she goes with right here. Rise ball gets her swinging. So that is a next to impossible pitch to hit. Look at it, Rise. Well, they brought her in for this reason. She's, they maybe would have hoped uh, they had an extra arm, had her arm for Team Japan, but when a game like the Lobes have played, if Press the Bruins to the end, you gotta bring in Garcia, and here she is with just two outs away from closing it up. Swing and a miss by Gomez. Gomez one for three today, 289. She stepped up to try and slap. They gotta do whatever they can to get a base runner. You see Garcia looking at her wrist, trying to get her pitch. You gotta love being a catcher right here. You got so many pitches you could call. Takes inside for a ball, even the count one and one. We've seen a lot of base runners today. GCU has left a few on. They left the tying run. I think it was in the seventh. They left the, the tying run on third. So, but here we go. They're gonna. They want to make a run. It probably starts right now. I gotta say, I think it's run out of time. That's up. Did it hit her? No. They're gonna say it went off the bat. So it ends up being a foul ball. So I think that was the rise ball again. It was a little up and in. Winds and delivers. Kind of an excuse me swing by Gomez and that'll be strike three. Well, not exactly the momentum that they were hoping to take out of that sixth inning when they were able to get out of a little bit of a jam, kept it a one score game. And so far Garcia kind of put a little pin in the balloon of the, uh, the excitement for that Lobes because Garcia, well, she's just one out away. Dietrich takes high for a ball. She's a Grand Canyon first baseman, batting 429 early on in the season, over two today. Kind of back in the box. Garcia winds and delivers. Fastball right down the middle for a strike. So one and one is the count. Lopes down to their last out. They got their rally caps on in the dugout, turn the visors upside down. Whatever happens here though, credit both these two teams on a great game we've got to watch today. They given it all they got, that is for sure. Neither team, uh, neither team giving up when things kind of seemed a little down at some times. Big some swing points. and a miss. Trying to tie the game up right there with that ball. So Garcia's best pitch has been the rise ball. Let's see if she goes back to it. Seems like the hitters have had a tough time laying off on it. That was that rise ball right there, hit towards Yankee Stadium. We'll do it again. So one and two is the count. Kaylee Dietrich. Very talented player for Grand Canyon as evidenced by that 
429 average. Garcia winds and delivers. Low, strike three called and that'll do it. So I think Dietrich was looking for that rise ball yet again and that was a low fastball. Great pitch by Gomez and what a game that we saw. Well, I 